Hi, this is Mike O. This is Nate Omdahl. We're with the Seattle Jazz Composers Ensemble, and we're interviewing local composers about music and music-related activities. Hi, uh, we're here with uh, Tom Marriott today. Pleasure to be here with you. <laughs> All right, so you do you do a lot of stuff, and um, your original music projects, Human Spirit and Flexicon. Anything else am I missing out? Are those the main? The ones that are active now, yeah. Yeah, and uh, talk a little bit about your process in writing music for those groups. I, I sort of always think about who. Is, you know, that would always be the first thing for me. Is that is who, especially with like human spirit, I mean, I really knew who the person I was going to be, and so I tried to write people to their strengths and, and sort of what I you know, was going to be the music be effective for those people. Um, and that's kind of a luxury that you have when you're working with the same people all the time. Flexicon has been has kind of morphed into a quartet, and so you know, think, trying to think about writing quartet music for trumpet quartet is tricky because there just isn't that much out there. Um, if you think about jazz albums that are trumpet quartet, trumpet piano, bass, and drums. Yeah. There's some really seminal records like in Perry Niles, Ruby Hancock, and the other Charles Tolliver and all, all of that. But um, but not like there is saxophone quartet where there's so many different shades of what that can sound like. Right, and through the wide world of jazz. Indeed, like indeed, yeah, yeah. indeed. And, and, all the, and, and, and you know, playing trumpet quartet or trio even can sound, it can feel really thin sometimes mm -hmm. depending on who the people know and what the gig are. So, to try to write music to sort of make it sound full and to give people something to do, you know, so sort of sort of fill in where it could be filled in and, and leave blanks where, where the guys will fill it in, you know. And so knowing who it is, you know, who is going to be playing the music and what it's for is always helpful. And I also sort of try to think about, you know, what is the what is the show, what is the live gig, <clears throat> you know, in terms of I need to have something that's, um, you know, I might say, well, I need, I need a tune that's fast. And I start there and go, like, well, it'd be kind of cool to have something that has some kind of a groove. I'm going to start there. I'm going to try to come sure. up with something like there. Just imagine, you know, sort of the very rough idea of what kind of thing I'm going to write. And then just sort of narrow it down. Mainly by just trying to hear it in my imagination. Like, if I was going to write a, a fast modal tune, what would it sound like? And just kind of, you know, sure. thinking about it and then just trying to write yeah. that down. You know, and sometimes, that's why my stuff sounds like everybody else's stuff, you know. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's it's it is a matter of what you hear in your head is 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 informed by what you listen to, you know. And, and, and all of your musical output is is informed by by what you what you feed it. So, in other words, you know, it's and if everything comes out in your own imagination right. that you put into it a certain sense. So, for you, how active is the process of for lack of a better word, censoring that. If you really want to, well, I want to try to push myself to do something I've kind of never done before, yeah. just to try this or that. Yeah. Do you, is there a really conscious, oh, that's kind of that thing from this language that I know, that's kind of that thing, you know, what's, yeah. talk a little bit about I, how that I, works for I, you. You know, I try not to really get too bugged about it. Because oh, okay. I, I feel, sure. you know, because I mean, you could really dwell on that for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how far do you, would you take that? I mean, how original is your original? It's always going to be informed by other people's work. Always. Sure, I mean, sure. So how, how far do you want to say, well, nah, this isn't original enough. I don't really think about it that way. I think about it as, it, it, you know, mostly I, you know, I have written a lot of music, but it, mainly out of necessity, you know. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it, and it, it, not in a, like, I need to put this music out there and have that inspiration. Sometimes, more like, I mean, sometimes you're know, walking around and you've yeah. you got, you got uh, things stuck in your head or you have a couple of bars or something. Track of those things and decide to put them together. But, but by and large, uh, I've never been like hit by the bolt of inspiration, unless yeah. unless I was in the middle of trying to write for something. You know, it's like, oh, I have this album coming up, or I'm this, you know, like, I used to you know, write some music for Hattie Callum's band. Sure. So I need something that, that he can play. You know, that he can play the head. He can be easily execute it, and that he can, he's going to sound good on, and all that kind of. The band is going to be able to play. And so then you start to think about it, and I feel like. Inspiration comes in sometimes, you know what I mean? But I not, not ever just like, experience. oh, I'm gonna just write something. Yeah, I've never had yeah. that experience, you know. I mean, once in a, once, in, once or twice, but that's, that's not typical. And I think that is, I think that's the same for a lot of people. It's certainly I'm sure. I'm sure. for me as well, you know. And you get into the habit of putting yourself in the situation where you have to 
write music. Yeah. And that is sparking your inspiration. You yeah. know what I mean? And it becomes a thing that's part of you. Absolutely. I, I really feel like the, you know, as because as improvisers, we really are composers. You know, it really is a Absolutely. matter of sort of working out your vocabulary um, and expanding your vocabulary. And I, I'm always, a, I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you really want to know what you don't know, uh, break out the paper and pencil and, yeah. and, 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 and yeah. see what you really don't know about yeah. music. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and huh. um, um, it, it's, it's very helpful. How do you uh, talk a little bit about how you integrate uh, improvisation and composition? Is it, mm -hmm. uh, what's the balance is kind of? It just depends. I mean, again, that kind of goes back to the who also. Mm -hmm. Thinking about who who's going to be playing on it. If, if there are people that you know, you play with some people and you don't have to write almost anything because they're going to make up stuff that's way hipper than you would write sure. anyway, or they're going to take what you wrote and, and, and change it in a way that, that makes it their, their own because they have such a per personal style, a personal approach to playing music. So it really depends. I mean, sometimes you want it to be more involved and sometimes you want it to be much less involved in terms of the improvising, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but and since jazz is the primary idiom that I work in, you know, the bulk of it is improvised, so I always come from it from an improviser's perspective, like what do I want to be playing on? Right. Since I'm writing it for me, I'm trying to, I mean, in a certain sense, I'm writing, when I write music, I write it for me. You know, yeah. I write it for, for what was comfortable for me, and I say, you know, what, what, it, how do I contextualize my own improvising? You know, so let me write something that will, that will put my vocabulary, my, whatever I'm thinking about improvising, in, in, into a format that makes it so that I feel good. That, right. that, that really puts it in the, in the light that I'd like to put it in. You know, much easier to play on my own tunes than you know, the other guys that I can't play so well. Yeah. <laughs> how did you how did you get into playing Latin and salsa music and African music? Kind of by accident, really. I mean, I've always been a fan, but um, you know, I guess it was maybe 98 or 99, I got a call from, from a, a family named Steve Wash, who's been around here a long time. Mm -hmm. They rehearsed like once a week and, and they had gigs on the weekends and all that stuff. They were working bad. Yeah, 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 definitely. And I got I got to um, kind of get my feet wet. And he played very much the sort of whatever the popular you know hits were of the time. It was much big. You know, it was a cover band, you know, for, for real salsa when it really still existed, which it kind of doesn't really hmm. anymore. But because um, people don't really dance to it as much as they used to. Now, like the clubs are it's like reggaeton. Oh, okay. but I mean it's still out there for sure. But. I just kind of got lucky that I had some, so I had a little bit of experience doing that. Uh, and when I moved away, one of my very good friends, Ray Vega, was very much plugged into that community of musicians. Mm -hmm. from Ray Vega. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, he's with, you know, Mongo Santa Maria for yeah. years, and Ray Moreno, yeah. you know, and, and I would, you know, we would hang, and I would go down to his regular gig, and I'd meet people, and sort of, um, like we were talking about earlier, kind of got on the list of guys to call for that stuff, even though I didn't really have a lot of experience doing it at the time. But in the course of being there and getting called to do stuff, that I really got to play with some amazing people Mario Rivera. Wow. You know, and, you know, and, and worked your way up the list as you started showing well, up and yeah, yes people or no. started playing with you? Or yes or I was no, getting, yeah. I mean, I was getting called to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I was you know, at, the, at the bottom of the list of people getting called to do stuff. Sure, but, sure. but sometimes people are busy. You know? <laughs> so I, I, I got called to do this recording session with Mabel Valdez and it was like a who's who. You know, I mean, it was, it, was a, it was a whole big band. It was like five percussionists, four trumpets, four wow. trombones, five saxophones, wow. you know, singers, the whole the whole thing. And I did like half, the first half of the record, it was, it was two days, and I did the first half, and it was like, wow, 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 wow. You know, it was, it was everybody. That's... It was like Bobby Porcelli, and it was, it was everybody. It was great. It was great. But, uh, so I got to I got to sort of pay some dues, you know, with like the, the guys that really work in that field. And then coming back, when I, when I came back here, uh, the Van Bow was just sort of getting started. Um, Carlos Gascante, the, the singer I had worked with, and Steve Washington, the band before that, he was like, man, you should, you should come play with us all the time. And I was like, great. So um, that's been a thing that I've done here for, man, it's been about 10 years now. Wow. We've been, it's the same, it's been the same person now. It's, it's a great band. Wow. Really. That's a real it's working great. band. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, it, band. it is, it is. And, um, you know, we've been busier at certain times than others, but sure. kind of as a up and down. But um, even that, I've had, and I've had a, some opportunities to play with. Uh, recently, I got to meet Nadal and the Spanish Orchestra, which was like burning. Yeah. It was super intense. You know, I 
It's the last of the real old school salsa bands still out there. Wow. You know, because I knew the guys in the band. You know, like my friend Doug and Carlos is on the band, and, and Hector Colon used to be like neighbors of my of, of a good friend of mine in New York. I mean, I, I knew like half the band before I, I walked in the door. I was like, oh hey man, oh hey. You know, I feel like one of the cats for a second. You know? Yeah. Even though I'm definitely, definitely, definitely not. <laughs> you know. When um, let me ask you, did you? Did you have a chance to put forth like your original music in New York when you were? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. What was that experience like? And was well, there a difference in, in receptions between here or not receptions, but how that whole thing is treated or not really? Or uh, well, uh, at the time, my brother and I played had a band together, mm -hmm. and um, we, we both moved there around the same time, and, um, and we had we had a lot of We probably played I don't know twice a month someplace. We hit like the 55 bar of this place called Cobb House, which is one of the things there. But uh, here and there, Detroit, you know, the gigs don't pay any money. The, the gigs don't pay any money, but now everybody's like stabbing each other in the head. <laughs> At the time, it was no big deal. Now Whoa. it's like, oh, yeah, that's what we can't play. But um, yeah, we just played our own shit. And, 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 and it would be difficult because you kind of have to get who you can get to play the game. Sure. It's hard to keep like a consistent person on that like, knows your music or that's even suited for the kind of music. And you, you can really play. then spend time on. If it's the same person now sculpting that sound of your music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes you have your original music and you but this I think that's what most people do there, and that was my sense of it, is that Oh, I see, yeah. Is that if you're yeah. going out and playing gigs, it wasn't a thing where like you were gonna call tunes. I mean you might call a few tunes. Yeah. You, you might call some jazz tunes, you know. Um, but primarily you were playing your own stuff. You know, and I think that's that's what people do. Yeah. I think, you know, or at least what people try to do. 